Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Today we are looking at um, like a serving board um, or uh, and, and like a server, like a um, spatula or something. Really kind of simple. I've got my, my board ready and I've got a shop bought spatula. Um, if you wanted to know how to make your own ones, there's some really cool videos. Check out Colwyn's Turn Spatulas. Um, we've done ones where we've um, cut them by hand, but this one is a real little cheapy bamboo one from from the shop. Um, and this is every, everyone's got access to this kind of stuff. Um, you can go out and grab it and make some really cool little uh, sets and things. So really simple, really nice, um, easy way to um, kind of make a, a really nice looking little set. Um, and we're going to kind of tie them together with with a, a, a design. So we're going to do a little bit of pyrography. We're not going to go mad with the pyrography because obviously it's um, it's a, a surface that's going to have food and stuff on it. Um, so yeah, a little bit of pyrography, a little bit of cutting on the scroll saw, um, and we're going to end up with a, a nice kind of either a matching pair or you could expand it into like a set. Um, to kind of display food and stuff on, on tables. Really good this time of year for your like barbecues and things like that. We've got uh, Colwyn on questions and on the cameras. Um, any questions, <coughs> excuse me, just pop them in the chat there. And as always, we'll do our best to answer. Okay, so let's have a little look on the workbench here. We've got, um, it's a kind of a long chopping board or a um, charcuterie board. So I say, I say, so <laughs> cheers to so charcuterie. So all your kind of like cold meats and things like that. Nice, um, you know, big area. And we've got a nice big handle on it too. Um, we've got to have something to kind of grip onto. Otherwise, the leverage is too much on these longer boards. Um, but you could put like nice couple of filled baguettes on there. And then also we're going to have a look at doing um, a little spoon. And like I say, echoes of the design going across them. So you've got a nice little um, kind of set. This was a beach board. Um, so really good for, for chopping boards. Lots of chopping boards are um, like laminated beach. This is a, a, a solid beach, um, but nice uh, figuring and stuff going through that. And today we've got a bit of brown oak or on its way to being a piece of brown oak with some, um, you know, again, some lovely little features and things. Um, it's got a couple of knots. You could fill them if you're thinking of, um, you know, the kind of cleanliness of it. Um, generally, I'm going to have kind of dry stuff on here. So nothing to, um, you know, nothing that's going to kind of get into these bits. Maybe the old breadcrumb, but we can flick them out. Um, and also on this sort of thing, we've got to be careful if you're putting like pickles and things like that on there. The vinegar will really set this um, this oak, um, change the colour of it. So we've got a lovely piece of oak here. I'm going to do some really kind of simple uh, marking out. There is a little bit of rot starting to creep in. Um, but again, I'm going to keep that on the back side of the board and then we'll cut our handle out of this section and um, yeah then we're kind of dodging all those um, bits that aren't going to be very good for our, our food. So let's do a few uh, marks on our piece of timber. I'll just find my ruler which I had two of a minute ago. There we go that'll do the job. So I'm going to mark off Kind of a halfway point and we're just under 160 mil wide so i'm gonna hang off equal spacings on both sides and just mark off at that 80 mil and then i'm going to come down a little bit try and keep it the same and another little mark at 80 so we can do almost like a little center line just down here Cool. I'm going to go for the width. And again, I want a fairly wide handle. So I'm going to go 20 mil either side of that line. So we've got actually a 40 mil handle in there. So super simple marking out. We've not got anything too difficult here. Thank you. 
So I'm just going to double check that one. I say super simple, I still managed to get that a bit out there. So just doing some lines that we can cut in a moment on the scroll saw. Quite had that way out. It all looked a bit diagonal there, but I think we're good now. Cool. And then I'm just going to use a square or just draw a line across with my rule. I'm trying to keep it square to that edge there. Looks about right. And again, these could be any shape. I'm just doing um, this kind of nice long shape because I like the look of it. Going to use something like a washer to give me some nice little radiuses. So I've got a big washer here and I'm just going to touch on these lines and just put that radius on. Really nice, quick, easy, repeatable way of doing it. So I've got these two from the handle leading into the main board. We're going to do that corner there. And that's just going to soften the look of it. Again, this is a kind of design choice. You could have that as a hard corner if you wanted. And then the same up on the end of the handle. And if you can't quite see it from uh, this camera, we'll show you a bit closer up on the, um, when we get on the scroll saw, a bit of a closer camera there. So I'm just connecting the edge of the washer to the, the edge of the board and just penciling on that radius. Cool. So like I say, super simple. We've just drawn some lines and, um, and then put those little curves on using a washer. So stuff you should have just sort of lying around and um, easy to get your hands on. Um, I've already planed this board up. Um, it's been through the plane of thickness so and had just a quick sand over. Um, so it's, it's prepped to go. Um, and we can go and sit on the scroll saw now. Just find my goggles. Oh, they're on my head. <laughs> cool. Okay. So then, let's just check the back of the board there. We're kind of reaching the back end of the um, of the scroll. So if we just go on that camera one there, Colton. So our board is kind of reaching the limits of what this scroll saw would do. What we can do is just tease it out to the side there and I can start my cut and we're kind of already into that radius before we get going. All right, so that's straight. That is just clearing that back pillar or the back of the throat of the scroll saw and that's where I can pick up the cut. Just checking you can see everything on screen looking good. And just resting on the side of the blade there. So I can just start to hear that cut forming. And then we can roll into that cut. Really nice kind of gentle radius, easy on the scroll saw. A little bit trickier on the band saw. But definitely achievable. Now I might have to come around this corner, depending on where the board sits, I may need to come and attack it from the other direction in case we foul on that, um, you know, the, the throat of the scroll saw, which I think it's going to. I want to bring this cut around as straight as I can before switching directions, and that's it. That's as far as I can get before we're hitting the back of the scroll saw there. But we're nearly there with our, um, nearly back onto that line. And I'm just going to backtrack through. Mm 
hear the extractor kind of just let go. Now my body's in the way now, so I'm going to move my stool out the way and just pick up on this line and come and meet this one. Quite often you'll notice these blades have a slight bias and they want to cut a certain direction. So I'm not actually pushing this fully straight up the um, up the length. I can just put, introduce just a slight angle to it. And we're coming up really nice and slow and gentle just to meet that of the cut. Slow it right down. And the piece is just released like that. I'm going to pop that to one side. And again, I'm going to rest the blade on the edge and just clearing the back of the scroll saw there. And then we can put this cut on here. That's going to go into just a really small little flat on the back. And then we'll pick up on our next little radius or corner. Try not to put too much sideways pressure on the blade. Again, my body's just in the way a bit, so I'm going to shuffle off my stool. Nice and steady. I'm using my right hand to kind of pressure up through the cut. And my left hand here is really just holding the board down and kind of acting as a bit of a pivot point if I need to change direction. So here's our curve, gonna swing into that. Just swinging my right hand out. There we go. I'm going to bring my stool back in so I'm not stooping for too long. Pick up on that straight. And then just rotating it while feeding it onto the blade. Again, nice and slow on the exit. Allow the blade to cut its way out rather than kind of pop out. So that was really easy. We've got a little kind of lip in here. We could get to that with some um, abrasive or maybe um, the small bobbin on a bobbin sander, something like that. These could be blended on the disc sander by hand or um, belt sander. Um, so yeah, really kind of simple. All right, it's got a nice kind of thickness to the board and we want this kind of longer handle so that we can kind of grip it. Um, without the um, leverage of such a long board, you know, you do need a good handle to, to grab it by. Okay, so back to the bench. Oh, we've got a couple more corners to get rid of actually these two down this far end. So we'll just quickly do that. How's everyone in the chat today, Cohen? Everyone checking in or 
Yeah, they're all checking in, having a, a good conversation. I didn't want to interrupt you, Ben, but um, Frederick was Frederick was just asking a question of me about um, the uh, offset pendants. And yeah, just to cool. answer your question, Frederick, it's side grain only, not end grain. Nice. Everyone's loving the demo, though. Lovely. It's nice having Colwyn on hand for yeah, turning questions. Uh, he gets a lot here. Him and Jason. Um, we're always pestering <laughs> with all sorts of stuff. So let's come back onto the uh, scroll sort here. Just going to fire that up. I'm going to knock those two corners off. Again, uh, um, the board is just a little bit too long. So introducing it at a bit of an angle to begin with. So, resting on the side of the blade, where our line starts. Not too much sideways pressure, but you just want to get a little bit of a shoulder forming before really kind of feeding it on. That's better. And that's the end. And again, you know, you could sand that in. You could um, get a little palm router maybe with a little edge breaker to round that off. I'll probably just use a little bit of abrasive just to take off the hard edge. Um, I quite like the squareness um, on the board. Um, so just a little bit of abrasive on these um, top and bottom corners. Um, and that will kind of smooth it and make the whole thing a bit more tactile as well. Cool. Right then. So back onto our bench. Um, I'm going to drill a hole in this just so um, we've got a place to hang it. So a little board in underneath. Something to drill into. Um, you know, you want it kind of the length of the board, really. You don't want to be um, kind of hanging off like this because um, then you're still going to get your break out and um, it makes it all a bit unstable. So choose one that's going to be <coughs> the um, same size as your board, or same length, I should say. Um, and we're just going to drill a little hole. We've still got our centre line on the handle there. 10 mil drill bit. Um, speed setting on two, fast for drilling. And I'm just going to get that, um, that little spur engaged and try and keep the drill nice and straight. That breaks really hard. Nearly that. Putting up a bit of a fight this out. little hole, 10 mil hole, and then we're going to countersink that one. So let me find my countersink here. There it is, this is one of the little fish ones. I quite like the snail countersinks as well, they're really good. Just bringing my fingers down past the cutting edge there, grip the chuck and grab hold of that one. So just a little whiz of that. Flip it over. And this is so you've got, you know, you can pop a cord in there, hang it up, or even, you know, if you're going for that like really nice wooden thing, you could have a little dowel that you could put through there to hang it. Um, yeah. So a little bit of abrasive now. We're just gonna tidy a couple of bits off. We're gonna knock off these hard edges here. I'm just going to use one of my off cuts as a little sanding block. I'm just 
softening our edges. Just so it's a little bit more comfortable. That like I say, I quite like the kind of chunky squareness of it, but just putting a little round on that corner so it doesn't hurt your hand. Because uh, it's a fairly heavy board. But just keep going with that. Get all your hard edges off. I think we'll just concentrate on the top for this demo, but of course, go all the way around and get rid of any pencil marks, maybe a little orbital sander or pad sander. Than, uh, pencil marks. Okay. Ben, there's a bit of discussion about the pencil that you're using. Oh yeah. Is that a pen is that pencil one of Ben's handmade one? That's right. Yeah, this is the 2.5 mechanical pencil. It's my old trusty. I take this everywhere. <laughs> uh, I guess that's a lot finer than the um standard pencils. There's a they reckon it's treason that you're not wearing an, using an Axminster pencil, but I guess that's because it's <laughs> finer right. and more accurate though, yeah, isn't it? That's right. So in the end here it's really cool. We've got a little sharpener. So you can um you know push that lid up a bit it's got a little sharpener up in here if you wanted that really fine point you can just sharpen your your pencil like that you can see the carbon just coming off there yeah i love this thing did um have you ever demonstrated making one of those i'm sure we have yeah yeah we'll but if to... not we will demonstrate it that's quite a handy little thing isn't it yeah, it's really nice. And also it's got um, like echoes of um, other designs in. So it's really good as a set for, um, it'll go with a fountain pen and a roller ball. Um, the name escapes you. I think it's Vertex, something like that, the pens. Um, but they've all got the same clip. And they have this, um, it's almost like a hexagonal or like a, a nut, like you get a spanner on there, you know, just on this end bit. Um, and they make a really nice set as a, a fountain pen and a pencil. Um, really cool. If we've not done that, I'll check back through the archives. Mm. If we've not, we'll do a little. We'll do a little set. I haven't turned a pen in a while. I get back in uh, in the wood turning workshop. Get back to your <laughs> name, Ben. Come on, Ben. The pen. That's uh, right. There is a little bit of conversation. We we'll make you giggle, actually. Okay, a little bit of a, yeah, a let's do that. A bit of conversation here. This board reminds me of my school days. My teacher used to use something similar to that, to similar as the cane. We were talking about that, weren't we? we? Don't, don't mention names. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking through the office a bit earlier, and you know, normally presented like that, it looks very much like a chopping board. But I was kind of walking around a bit like that, <laughs> and straight away, it um, yeah, takes on a different uh, kind of look. But no, this is a serving board. It's perfectly innocent and um, a nice little. Well, one of our <laughs> teachers had a um, old butter pad, didn't he? That uh, butter paddle that he used to use. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I obviously yeah. not on us because no, we were far too you good. Never but... saw that, did you? Kind of no. good boy at school. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, yeah, sorry if we're giving anyone flashbacks <laughs> of uh, the, the misspent youth. Um, but yeah, really nice, uh, simple design we're going to put on this now with our um, pyrography. Um, I just want to show you a couple of designs. Um, these are what they call borders. So quite often they're in font packs. They You can get them on, um, on like uh, Word and Adobe and that kind of thing. They quite often come free with all the different um, kind of types of lettering. You get all different designs. Um, and I like them, they're quite linear. 
Um, so you don't have to, you know, cover the, the board with it. And like I say, we want to keep the pyro to a minimum because it's likely people might be chopping on these, cutting bread, and you don't want like a really complicated design because it's going to start to uh, pick up little bits of carbon. You'll get little bits of black um, stuff in your food, uh, which isn't, you know, isn't the end of the world um, if you get one or two little bits. But um, yeah, there's all sorts of these border designs that you can choose from. Um, quite often they're... Um, What's the word where they're balanced like that? Uh, geometric or um, yeah, there's a there's a word, isn't there? It's escaping me right now. It's like balanced, yeah. But it's same on both sides. I'm sure they're going to help us out in the comments in just a minute. Um, so we want uh, to tie two bits together. So on that one, we've got this kind of um, it's like the fleur de lis type of shape. Um, that was bought from a Swedish retailer, quite a big one, um, really nice little bit of um, walnut, and I spotted it, it had all this ripple and stuff in it, all the rest were quite plain, so I just grabbed this one um, to be part of this set. But um, today's one, really simple, just a piece of bamboo. Um, of course, we can make these. You can, um, you know, use these as templates as well. Perhaps some of that oak. I had the offcut here. Um, we could probably get, you know, a matching set of, um, you know, so it's the same timber as the as the board. Um, we're just going with this one to save a bit of time today. But there are some cool videos out there on how to make spatulas, how to make spoons. Um, definitely check out Colwyn's Turned one. They're really nice and would work really well with this um, type of project. Um, so, yeah, we want to create a design that's going to echo on both, um, both bits. Okay, so I'm just going to measure in about 15 mil from the edge. On both sides, oops, let's get rid of that bit so I'm nice and stable. Uh, 15 mil in from the edges. Going to also use the edge of the board as a kind of reference parallel to the rule. And I'm just going to draw a line along the edge of the board. Kind of roughly guessing on our gap there. I think I've guessed that. All right, maybe go a little bit further there. And then we'll do the same up at this side. There's my dots, just roughly for now. Of course, you can take measurements and make it uh, you know, super accurate. I'm just going with, it's pretty good. Maybe a bit longer there, so I'm just gonna add a little bit on the end. Boop. Okay, and for this design, we can just add a little ball on each one, each end. And of course, we're going to burn this in in a minute with our pyro. And then we've got three kind of teardrop shapes. But, you know, if you're not confident doing it like this, of course, get your template out. Get a bit of the old carbon paper in underneath or however you kind of transfer your projects on. Um, you know, that's going to work just as well. Or probably even a bit better than my freehand uh, patterns. Right, so you can get those um, borders, they're called. Um, you know, Google search them as well. They come up on your um, Google images, just put borders. And if you're into a certain style, say you like Art Deco or Art Nouveau, um, of course, just pop that in the search field as well. And that's going to come up with tons of cool examples. Um, you can get your hands on. 
Oh, sorry, is that a bit off camera there? So one off to the side slightly. One in the middle. And I quite like this way of working, of just kind of um, putting things together. Of course, you know, if it's not quite right, you can sand it back off or, um, you know, tweak it until it's perfect. But I quite like this way of working now. I used to be, you know, procrastinate a bit too much and want everything to be perfect. And it just takes so much time. So much time and you're so tough on yourself as well. I think just let it let it come out, let it um you know, do your thing. Um and don't worry too much about this look, especially on pencil. You can just rub that out and start again if you wanted. Um so pyro. <coughs> I'm using the fire writer. So oops. Antex Fire Writer, just chuck it around. Um, nice slim little pen for this one. And we're just going to um, kind of cut in the outline. I've got quite a sharp tip on this. And in fact, let me just see if it will reach over to the, um, the scroll saw camera. Oh, where are we here? Okay. Oh, it's not. Uh, no, I, I think I'll give that a. No, it's not going to focus. But I've got a really thin little blade in that. Sorry? <laughs> well, no, I just can't have. A... Oh, let me do it from here. Uh, this is it. This is it. Yeah, so I just had to put the unit down. So if you look. It's like a, a thin blade. It's been just a normal writing tip. It's been hammered out and then a bit of abrasive on the edges just to put an edge on it. Um, and it, it works like, just like a knife, a craft knife. And that's how you use it as well. So it's going to cut into the timber rather than burn on the surface. And I do pretty much most of my work with this tip. Feels a little bit hot. So the beach was really kind of dense. And I've left it on that same setting I was using on the beach. So I'm just going to bring the temperature down. Because the oak's burning a bit more readily. I'm just going to put in these little teardrop shapes to begin with. And it's like cutting something out of paper with a craft knife. That's how I kind of describe the feeling of it. You have to kind of twist it because it is cutting in um, to create the curve. Um, so we're going to come around this top curve and twist the pen as we go. And I like to have a bit of support. So I usually have my other hand somewhere on the board or a finger just supporting this hand. Um, just adds another bit of stability. Cool. Using the kind of flat of it now to create a little round. So using the flat rather than the tip. And I'll do the same the other side. Do you think we all come in a little bit closer on that camera, Colwyn? Yeah. Might just zoom in a touch. So, oh, we got the multi-screen. Sorry, folks, we're just um, playing around here. While you're doing that. Yeah. While you're doing that, we'll ask a few questions. So Frederick's just uh, Frederick's asking uh, roughly um, how long would one of those tips last? So just in general, just roughly. Yeah. So I this this tip will be years old now. Um, I find 
people tend to press a little bit too hard with pyrography. And that is from using pencils and pens all our lives. You know, where you, if you push a bit harder with a pencil, you get a darker line. So our brain's telling us if we push harder, we're going to get a, a darker line. But it doesn't quite work that way with the pyro. I suppose if you push hard with the fact that it's a sharp, it'll start following the grain and you'll get a, you won't get a straight line anymore. Yeah, exactly. So um, we're, we're quite lucky with this one. It's got fairly straight grain. But sometimes if it starts shooting off to the side, exactly like Colin says, it starts to railway and follow the grain. Um, so we're going nice and gentle on this one. Um, but these sharp tips also are good for cutting through the grain. Um, but these, these will last me years. I, I very rarely change the tips unless I'm changing from one shape to another. Um, sometimes you want a round wire for, for kind of surface detail. I've got a question here from James as well. So he's asking, what's the difference between the fire right we've got there mm -hmm. and the Peter Childs and the razor tip? Yeah, so um, the, obviously the, uh, the price. There's a difference in price. Um, they pretty much all do the same thing. Um, I always liken it to cars. So, you know, a, I don't know why, Skoda always pops to mind when, I, <laughs> when I'm trying to think of a, a, that they've kind of upped their game in the last few years. Go careful, you're going to yeah, get Yeah, I know, I know. Um, but I always sort of liken it to car. So, you know, the kind of top end ones are going to be a little bit more comfortable, um, perhaps a little bit easier to, to use, maybe a bit more kind of ergonomic. Everything sort of feels nice. Um, but they both get you to A from A to B. Um, it's just kind of how you get there and, you know, what sort of luxury you're, you're uh, expecting. But... Design details, the Peter Charles pen is really nice and thin, which I quite like. It, it, it's nice to kind of, um, you know, to hold that pen. Um, they all stay pretty cool, these kind of top end ones. Um, the, the clamping system's a bit different on the Peter Charles one. You've got two, um, you've got like a bolt and then a, a kind of a loose washer that kind of pulls up onto it. Whereas this has got two barrels and a couple of bolts that pinch down onto it. Um, the razor tip one has a kind of a foam handle, which is quite um, big. But again, I think you can change those. You can kind of customize them a little bit, um, getting different grips and things. And my fire writer at home, I've got um, like a leather sleeve that I put over over the handle because. I do quite a lot of um, like big projects where you have to have the temperature up um, quite high for quite a long time. Um, and that just protects my fingers, um, keeps them cool. But um, yeah, the, the, there are little differences, subtle differences, um, usually based around the pen. And if you're kind of choosing what unit to go for, try and get hands on with some of these and, um, you know, use that. Uh, sorry, get hands on. See how it feels in your hand. Um, try the different ones. If you've got, you know, chance to, to get the selection of get hands on different ones. Um, I quite like the Fire Writer. I like it. Um, the, I like the pen. And that's the bit that you're going to be handling. The unit, you know, not so much. Some Peter, the Peter Charles one will take two pens. Um, so, it, you know, it depends. If you are if you think there's going to be a couple of you wanting to sit down and have a go, um, sometimes it's nice to have the, the two pens. Um, but, yeah, they they pretty much all do the same thing. And, and the tips that go in them, well, razor tip maybe is slight... Um, you know, slightly different from these two because they produce and um, make all their own tips in so many different styles and varieties. Um, 
but for the Peter Childs and the um, Antex one, again, you can buy them off the shelf, but generally we're, we're using the uh, nichrome wire, nichrome wire. Um, so you're making your own tips anyway. But I guess, sorry, the long of waffling there, the long and short of it is um, I would base your choice on the pen rather than the kind of the unit. Um, how, you know, whether you like a kind of a thin pen, a chunky pen. So I'm just doing some little lines in this. And then I'm going to go over the top of it. So it's giving it a little bit of, um, it, it's block, blocking in that color. But then I want to kind of just scoot over the top of it with the flat. And that's going to kind of close up any of those little cuts that we've made. Again, we don't want, because um, this is going to be around food, we don't want little bits of food getting in there. So I'm just kind of sealing it from the top by using a bit of pressure down, using the side of the pen. And that's really kind of blackened it now. Um, let's come onto this side, do the same here. So just laying down and sealing up all that stuff. And we are going to put a, uh, a finishing oil on this once we're done. Um, and that is going to be food safe once all the dryers have evaporated. Which doesn't actually say that on the bottle, but it, we, we know it does. Um, they can't often say that because the dryers are a bit toxic but they they dry really quickly in in the finishing oil um, and then make you know a, a food safe for surface okay so we're going to repeat that on this side i don't really need to um, see that happening so let's go on to our spatula and i've gone a bit long on that haven't i so I'm going to pop my pen back in the fire right now. We're going to find a rough middle. Just deciding what's top and what's bottom. So you see on the bamboo here, this is a piece of bamboo. It's like a little telltale sign. You see this kind of um, uh, line going horizontal uh, with the grain running through. Um, and then we've got this kind of either the inside or the outside of the bamboo. Um, but it's actually on the outside of the spatula. But because it's kind of going in like that, it looks like it's um, it's the inside, but that's the inside. So we're going to mark up that side. Find your midpoint. And again, I'm just going to draw a line on there. Oops. We can make sure it's central in just a minute. Yeah, not quite. Um, and we're going to burn this anyway, so um, that pencil mark will just be sanded off. We're just coming back a bit from that. It's hard to tell when the rule's on top, whether it's central or not. That one looks better. Now we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to pop a little dot either end. Not going right up to here because then we won't get our detail in. So we're going to pop one around about there. We're going to do our teardrop shapes. Maybe gone a little bit smaller on this one, but. The, um, the design carries through, and that's what's going to kind of tie them together as a set. Yep, happy with that. And then same this side. I have burned bamboo before, but it was a long time ago, so a bit of a gamble on how this is going to come out, you know. So what I'll do... It's just take that temperature right down to begin with. 
and I said before, some of these woods burn at different temperatures. Um, so, you know, play it safe, drop your temperature down on your um, pyro unit. Maybe start in an area where you're gonna have quite a heavy burn. So if I start up on one of these teardrop shapes, just turn that over. It's pretty good. So I know I can increase the temperature. <laughs> I have whizzed over this with a bit of abrasive as well, just to remove the um, kind of shop bought finish. Sometimes those, uh, you know, whatever they're finishing it with, usually like a lacquer or something, um, that will give off toxic smoke. I mean, all smoke's toxic, but, you know, a worse variation of it. Um, I would always work in a well-ventilated room or um, a little carbon filter, something like that. Um, if you're doing a lot of this type of stuff. Mostly working with natural timbers and things when I'm working and um, I can get away with doing that in the kitchen. Steph often says she quite likes the smell of it. So, uh, yeah, it's quite a nice, um, like an open fire type of smell. Very comforting. So again, use the side of the um, this this nib just to kind of create a little round or a dot, and then we can follow that midline. We've got two here, but the one that looks more central. And like Cohen was saying a minute ago. The grain on this is just dropping right in between the grain, but thankfully, it's perfectly in line with our line. So it's guiding me this time instead of bullying me off to one direction. So different timbers will have different properties. Um, that beach, those little speckles tend to force the pen out of the, the workpiece. So you usually have to work quite hot on the beach. But this stuff is just burning really easy. Nice. So again, using that flat just to put a little spot on twisting the pen around this shape and then where we've got that round we can make just a few marks with the very end of the nib to kind of create a round by doing three or four small straights if you if you get what i mean so just poking that sharp tip in and then twisting the pen as we come around that curve and I would keep this very simple it can be you know you can knock more out that way you can get more done um, and this handle you could go to town on because it's never going to really touch the food but certainly the board and um, the serving part I wouldn't do too much burning on we just want to keep that nice and, um, you know, kind of carbon free if we can. Jennifer had a good idea. She said um, when she does her, she has the decorative side for for serving and the other side for cutting. Yeah, quite great a cool idea. idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frederick's just asking, do you use at all the high volume, low pressure system for finishing? And if so, do you, do you like it? What do you think of it? High volume, low pressure. Spray, a spray system for um, putting finishes on. If, do you do enough? Of, enough no, of? not really. It's not really my, um, not really on my radar so much. That 
But you, Cohen? Not really. They're, I guess the production guys, if they're doing things like this in large batches, it might be worth it. I know um, a couple of wood turners that use them for putting a lacquer on. Yeah. Um, and that it gives quite a good uniform um, coverage. Um, and they'll just keep a water-based lacquer in um, in their gun and um, just use it when they've done a batch sort of thing. But mm. No, I also uh, know a cabinet maker that uses it for um, for spraying paint onto the garden seats that he makes in large numbers. Yeah. Um, I've seen it. It's, it does give a very, very good coverage. And like getting all the little nooks and crannies. So if you've got like a, I don't know, like a Windsor chair or an outdoor bit of furniture that's got tons of little angles on, mm. those sprays sometimes are going to save you so much time getting in and out of those little... Um, you know, hard to reach areas. Something like Fuji spray or something like that. Are you talking, Colin? Yes. Yeah. So we have used the Fuji spray system, mostly on um, like fences and fur garden furniture, stuff like that. Um, little bits like this. I think sometimes the cleanup of those types of systems, um, you know, will take you a little while. Um, so something like this, I just I would just brush an oil on. Um, the uh, finishing oil would be my oil of choice or, or the uh, food safe. So chestnut, uh, Liberon, those types of, of oils are going to work really well like, uh, with these. And like I say, oh, especially the, um, is it the Liberon one we use quite a lot, the finishing oil? Um, that works really well. And um, <clears throat> I, I kind of know what it's going to do when I put it on because I've used it so many times. Um, sometimes with these finishes, you put them on and you're like, oh, I didn't want that to happen to my piece of wood. Um, but I kind of know what's what it's going to do. Um, so I tend to stick with it. Not not too adventurous with my finishes unless it's like coloring and uh, stains and that sort of uh, way of finishing. Um, but oils, I always go with that finish. You know, it works on everything and um, always gives me a nice kind of uh, kind of a satin sheen rather than super glossy. Um, uh, it doesn't kind of change the color of the wood too much. Um, slight kind of ambering or yellow into to the um, to the oil, um, but I I I know to expect that. Um, and sometimes you put on like another oil and you're like, oh, it's too thick, and you you're struggling to put it around, or um, it's too thin. It just gets sucked straight in on on a certain point. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to stick with the finishes that I kind of uh, know perform well for what I'm going to do. Um, that will work on my uh, bigger pyro pieces that have got like more complicated stuff going on. It doesn't pick up the spirit stains or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I always I always pretty much go with that uh, finishing oil. The Liberon one's really, really good stuff. Um, the chestnut food safe oil used quite a lot as well. If we know it's going to be... Um, you know, use quite soon after being made. I usually go with the food safe oil because um, it dries a bit slower, but it doesn't have those um, dryers in it. Uh, it's like a liquid paraffin, so it's totally um, you know safe to use and um, works really well on these utensils, on chopping boards, and everything where food's going to have actual contact contact with the um, you know whatever it is you're making. I think that's about it, really, Cohen. We, obviously, we could um, do a little bit more than this, put a um, bit of oil on it. Um, we've got a little bit of, um, you know, a bit more pyro to do on this one. But, you know, the point is we're trying to create um, like a set and using those borders that are easily available um, or creating, you know, a shape that you like or um, um, is going to be going to be nice for yours. I quite like this one where they're all the same length. That makes a really nice um, display. Um, well, I've got a question. Do you have to, um, once you've done that, that has that risen the grain at all? Do you have to lightly yeah. sand over? Do you need that? So, yeah, cool. Cool question. Thanks, Cohen. So, yeah, doing, um, it, it does, it, instead of pushing things down, um, especially if you're doing little lines like this where you're kind of cutting in, tends to raise up um, especially if you put like an oil on it all those little bits are going to kind of swell um, and I've noticed I've done quite a few gates and uh, you know saying 
to such and such, you know, to Charmouth or, or one of our local areas. Um, and I did that same technique with that. So cutting all these little lines in. Um, and what's happened is where it's been in the rain and stuff has actually swelled up. Um, much more than the surrounding area of timber. So it kind of, the, the rest of the timber is laying flat. But where we've done the pyro, it's kind of um, come up out of the surface, which was which uh, surprised me a little bit. Um, so, you know, if there's going to be something for outdoors, um, you know, sometimes use the side of the, um, the, the burner or pen to kind of lay it flat. Um, and that's not going to swell up as much then, but I just like the texture that you get off these little um, kind of lines and things. Um, uh, but on the gates and stuff, they're going to weather a little bit quicker. Um, so sometimes it's worth, you know, knowing where that, uh, whatever it is you're making is going to go. Um, whether it's, you know, in, in weather conditions, um, it's getting rained on and stuff. Because uh, now that those have kind of swelled up, it's lost a lot of the colour um, just through uh, being exposed that a little bit further. And if you could touch in the gates and things, um, it's slowly kind of wearing. Um, so I'm going to go back to those and uh, maybe use a bit of spirit stain. Or something like the scorch marker is really good if you're going, um, you know, you have to do something in situ. You can't, you know, I can't, there's, there's some gates up on, um, up in, in Charmouth. Um, or I can't plug in my fire right or anywhere because we, we're literally on the cliff or on the beach or whatever. Um, the scorch marker, um, a little kind of trace over with that, and maybe um, uh, one of those little uh, micro flame burners. Um, Proxon do a good one. Um, I think we sell a couple of different versions. Um, but the, the ones that the kind of uh, chefs use to do the creme brulees and stuff, they, they're really useful. And they will instantly uh, change the color of that scorch marker and um, give you a real nice black uh, color. So if you need to kind of um, refresh something that's outdoors, that little combo is a good combo using the scorch marker and a, and a micro flame burner. Um, but yeah, this, these do kind of fade over time. If you're kind of washing them up and things like that, it will kind of dull back a bit. But you'll always see that on there. It's kind of indelible because we've cut into the, the, um, uh, into the wood. So it's down below the surface as well as sitting on the surface. Um, so it should last a long time. And it may end up just as a really nice little texture rather than uh, seeing it black or, or the kind of softened brown colors. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Like I say, really simple one, but I tried to do ones that would be easy to go out and get, you know, you can pick these up in the shop, um, really readily available stuff. So sometimes I do projects and I think, oh, no one's going to have this stuff at home. But, you know, easy to go out and pick up wooden spatulas. The bamboo working really well there. Um, chopping boards you can pick up really easy. Just remember, um, you know, sand off the, the finish, especially on a, on the chopping board. Um, you want to sand that back. Um, wipe it maybe with a, a, a kind of a moist cloth um, to get rid of any of that finish. Um, it, it may have kind of buried its way down into the, into the grain. Um, so wipe it back, allow it to dry, and then do your pyro. Because, um, like I say, those um, finishes, if you're burning them, they, they smell really bad. Okay, so thanks again for joining us. Uh, if you've liked this, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you soon for more We're Working Wisdom.